All right, in this episode, we talk about a couple cool things. We talk about some ghost towns because it's Halloween. Talk more about some more fuck towns, just like usual, you know. And as we're recording this podcast, we're like, oh, you know, truly independent wrestling. We haven't heard any news. But as as we we're posting that, they must have. We were completely wrong. The wrestling gods answered. November twenty sixth. Wait. No. November 16th. November 16th. November uh, 16th. <laughs> truly independent co- wrestling comes back. So, yeah. And so we talk- for November knockout. We didn't get to talk about that, but uh, we'll get into more detail about that. As later we, on in the show. It, well, no, because we didn't talk about it because we thought it was done. But we kind of talk about it later in the show. But next week At on our next episode, show. we'll have more details about that as... We just found this out. And then, you know, we talk about some spooky facts and... Spooky facts. You know, we have some fuck town spooky facts, spooky news. Wait, did I do spooky news? I don't know. Who knows? We, we did some spooky news. Yeah, we, ch- and we got changed the things around. Wrestling. Yeah, well, as we, always. Yeah, wrestling and, you know, our normal stuff. Except and our liquor of choice for the day, uh, as always. Yeah. You'll just have to stay tuned. Yeah, and you know, uh, we took out the weird town names, fuck town names, and replaced it with just ghost towns for this episode. But next next episode will be towns that actually have some interesting facts about them, and not just their name. Because the towns that we picked had interesting names, but they were fucking boring as shit. Like Mexican water, nothing happens in fucking Mexican water. We mentioned Mexican water in episode two, and it was just a town. In the middle of fucking Arizona or some shit. Nothing interesting about it. It was just dry. Like dry hill. Like dry hill somewhere. I don't know. We talked about it like last uh, episode seven. Dry hill was just nothing. Dry hill was nothing. So we decided to pick some interesting towns with uh, interesting facts about those towns. So Yeah, wherever he's at. <laughs> Perky Poodle Piscal Play. Welcome to episode eight. <laughs> Hey, welcome. It's spooky week for DSP. Spooky week. Spooky, spooky, spooky. Spooky. Halloween is this week, so instead of fuck towns and all that, spooky towns, spooky news, and spooky facts, everything's fucking spooky. So, welcome to episode eight, eight. of Swamp Talk. We fucking made it. We to did eight. to eight episodes. The average, the average male episode, penis is only about four inches. The average podcast episode that the average person does on average is seven episodes, and we now have made it past seven episodes. Over the summer, I thought that we were going to end at five, but. Uh, thank God we didn't. Insert clapping track. If I can find it. There's a lot of things I forgot. Oh, and before we get into the episode, don't forget. I probably still didn't tell anybody yet. On YouTube, Swamp Talk now has a video version. Uh, so that's why you that's why know. when we say, oh, let's put the clip here. Or let's put the uh. clip here. It's not we're putting the clip in the audio in the left corner of your right ear. It's you because need this table there's. For anything, man? Yeah, my TV. You can try to open it with that. There we go. Explodes everywhere. Cool. So beer this week. We didn't grab stone cold beer, but um. Uh, I got some mango Kush wee ale. It tastes like bud. I got winter lager that tastes like normal lager. Not I... bud that you smoke, but you know, but like. It's a little more bitter than normal lager, but I don't know. I thought this was the one that had like the pine taste. <sighs> Look at that. Not. So you know, ladies love when you take a little beer dripples, rub it on yourself, get that beer scent on there. Kind of like what I do with the uh, pine essential oils. I just drench everything in my gear bag, and I take it out, and the whole locker room smells like pine. It's great. Beer essential oils. You just go to your local liquor store. Yep, you can grab them right around the corner there. 
All right, we didn't have paper because last time the paper made way too much noise. Paper's and... fucking... Uh, you burn all the trees. Mostly it's because I didn't want to go back inside and print everything out. Yeah, it's a waste. We're save the save the trees. So, like normal, we'll open up. Oh, we already opened our beer. Well, um, since uh, you know, I'm drinking. Uh, we'll just do my mango you know. Kush. I'll cheers. I'll cheers a bowl for you guys. You know, hang on. There we go. Ready? Ready? So. Welcome! Let's right, start this welcome. show off. Yeah. Alright. Like always, our first thing on the list is... Fuck, 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 laws. <laughs> Alright, so Alaska, because Alaska's got a lot of them. You know, I really can't fucking stand Alaska anymore. I never want to move there now. It, it's too it, much. It's so fucked up. They're so far away, you'd think that they would at least have better fucking laws, but no. They, they got the worst fucking laws ever. So the main point of going out to a bar is to get drunk and have a good time. That's what we do all the time. Is Well, that's why we haven't been to a bar in a while, because we always get kicked out. We might as well be in Alaska, because in Alaska it is illegal to get drunk in a bar. I you're thought that was the you're... whole point of a bar. Where the all you're the fucking alcoholics go? Oh, it's illegal. <coughs> Help! <coughs> per state laws, a person <coughs> who is already drunk drunk may not knowingly enter a bar to drink more. How do you not know you're going to go into a bar and not drink more? Or remain in the bar that got them drunk in the first place? If I'm in a bar, I'm going I'm to drink, you know? Confusing and cruel? Yeah, because I don't even know what I'm saying right now. It, look, if I'm going to a bar, I expect there to be drinks. Yeah, and when you go bar hopping, you're already drunk from the last bar. And the point to go to a What's bar is to get... You don't go to the bar. It's like, ah, I feel like paying overpriced prices for these fucking drinks today to not get drunk. No. If we're paying those fucking prices... You better be getting us drunk. Because we don't know how to make those drinks. Only you bartenders know how to make them drinks. So this pro law was probably made a long time ago. I don't know when. I don't think so. But I uh, think it was has recent. it been updated? No. 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 Nope. don't even bother. And you know what? Police actually enforce this law. Of course they do. <sighs> even if I just walk across the street to a bar in Alaska, drunk... Or get drunk in the bar, I'd still get arrested. It's fucked. I did want to go to Alaska, but not anymore. Never. I mean, what, do you, what do you do? You can't do nothing. You don't... Yeah. Alright. I can't see it because it all looks like squiggles. Coloradans. It's the way I spelled that on my computer, so that's the way I'm going to read it. Coloradans. Coloradans. The, you know, the first state to have weed legalized and has a better... <laughs> better... Weed stuff than we do. Yeah. Coloradans. You can't own a catapult in Colorado and Aspen to be, but you can own one, but you just can't have one. You can own it, but you can't have it. Yep, you can own it, but you can't have it, buddy. So it better be in a different state. Um, <clears throat> but you know, flaming arrows are also off limits. So pretty much all. Primitive technology. You can have primitive them. weapons. You can have all this. You can have a catapult. You can own it. Arrows. Um, but you better not physically have it. Allas. Whatever that is. Allas. But everything's off limits. Just You can have them, but you just don't use them. You can't. So that catapult that we made out of the tree. You can't have them. You can own it. You can't have it. We can make it, but we can never use it. That's how we get rid of our food that we don't want to stay in our area. It. We just take a tree. Can't ever have it. And then we just fling it right into the woods because, you know, something's going to eat it. I mean, you you throw garbage out in the woods, and eventually it's just going to be gone. So it just cleans itself up. Well, in Florida, because Florida's fucked. Florida fucking sucks. You can't sell your children. Which is kind of obvious. But, like, if you want to, like, 
hey man what if you need a couple extra bucks to pay rent and it's like you look over and okay you like, like, I mean, I like that one, but that one's been fucking up lately. You got, you know, you got an extra child that you can get rid yeah, of. Yeah, you know, you, you that, see no use for them, so. That aunt that always Solid. comes over, you know, she can't buy your kid. I mean, the aunt's with the kid all the time, and you don't want, I, I mean, you want the kid, but you don't want the kid around, and you want to reverse, you, you they can't. They want to be parents, You but can't sell them. They don't want to be parents. I kind of get it, catch my but at the same time, if you want to sell your kid to, like, a relative or, like, a friend that always hangs out with them, you can't do that, and I think that's kind of fucked. I mean, if a friend's always hanging out with my kid, I wouldn't sell my kid to him either. That's kind of fucking weird. Oh, and it's also a felony to sell your kids in Florida. Wow. So for all that the people obvious. that think they're going to sell their kid that live in Florida, don't. It's a felony. And it's fucking Don't illegal. fucking sell your kids, fucking Floridians. You suck. All right, next. Instead of sit, we changed this a little bit. Just instead kidding. of just, instead of just, you know, we changed the segment a little bit. Instead of just, you know, naming off towns with weird names, we're gonna just tell you fuck towns like. Help! I can't find. There it is. Like you know, like towns that are interesting and not just towns with interesting names. <laughs> interesting. But um, here we go. We got... Where, where, where are we? Well, this week, <laughs> normally it would be weird towns or fuck towns. I don't know how to read. But this time, this week, because of Halloween, we got... Ghost, ghost, ghost Town. Ghost, ghost. ghost. Oh, So that's what those shapes mean. Oh. All right, so... K- Calico. Cali- Calico? Calico, Calico, California. Calico, California. Probably won't find any silver in this one time no mining silver. hot spot. You can experience a gold mine of activities in this ghost town. <laughs> Turn tourist attraction. Hey, Calico ghost towns. Now, a California historical landmark. Where, where is this word? You, you can explore Maggie Mine. What the fuck's Maggie Mine, man? Probably a silver mine in Calico, California. Oh, dude, you disc drive, bro. Dude. 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 All right, so you can go to Maggie Mine. I guess it was the only formerly used mine in the area that's safe for guests to see. So if it's not Maggie Mine, don't fucking go to that mine because, you know, chances are you're probably going to get coal. You won't find diamonds. It's just... I mean, we- if I remember, if you're watching the video, uh, Swamp Talk podcast, because apparently there's already a Swamp Talk on YouTube, but they haven't been active, so we're just going to, so we switched it to we Swamp were, Talk, not, thinking, oh, there's not going to be a Swamp Talk podcast. Yes, there is, but they haven't posted any videos or anything, so we are not in competition with anybody. That, that has out. nothing to do with this. It was going but somewhere, but don't I follow where it was going. the other Swamp Talk. If you don't see flannel, don't fucking follow. But yeah, if I can remember, I'll put a picture. The town looks pretty cool. Like, you know, right above Corey in that corner over there. Or wherever there's empty space, like probably right here. I'll try to put a photo. Put it right there, bro. This ghost town. Put it right here. Oh my god, dude. That That's town. Pretty cool town. Alright. Where was I? Alright. So yeah, don't go to any other mine unless it's Maggie Mine. You can also take a ride on Calico Adisa Railroad. Uh, sorry if I mispronouncing that. I'm kind of fucking drunk. Um, to see all of the sites. Forgot about our heater. Whatever those sites may be. I mean, it's, it's rocks. You know that card that you pull in Monopoly? You get this railroad. It lets you see the sites. If you're really feeling daring, you can even participate in one of the spooky ghost tours. Yeah, why, why wasn't there more about the spooky ghost tours? Because I didn't read it before I wrote it down. The SB, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I need a bottle opener. Oh, wait, I got you. All right, this one's for you, bro. Oh. Do you like that name? Whoa! 
You almost had some fucking. We got a rule: if you spill your beer, you gotta kick it. We don't and we be still beers in here. Yeah, I don't want to kick any beer in here. That was a close one. And then I gotta go outside and let out all this heat because we can't have the heater on because it's too fucking loud. So I gotta go outside and kick a beer. It's a cool thing, you know, it's a good way to keep your beer in your hand. You know, you're out with your friends by a fire and stuff, you know. Someone kick spills a beer. A beer you you gotta it. kick it. You and kick then you open up a new one. If you spill that one, you gotta kick it. That's the law that Just we go by. Alright, St. Elmo, Colorado. Uh, formerly named Forest City, St. Elmo was once a bustling mining center with a population of 2,000 at its peak. So it was a mining town in Colorado. And, um, yeah, by 1930, only seven people reported resided there. Wow, that's really early. In 1930s, I thought the mining industry was so good in the 30s. Yeah, it went downhill. But, um, Great Depression. But, yeah, you know, seven people. <laughs> included... Yeah, now you know my problem, right? <laughs> seven people reportedly resided there, including the family who ran the general store and hotel. So that's like two people and um, one who was rumored to haunt the place to this day. So there's still a resident in St. Elmo, Colorado, and he haunts the town. You know who it is. It's Elmo. Yeah, it's Elmo. Elmo. St. Elmo's haunting. Elmo. (laughs) Fucking Elmo. Um, Now privately owned and maintained... Visitors can still swing by the small city, which is said to have some some of the most paranormal activity <laughs> in the state. So if you're listening from Colorado, which by our statistics, no one's listening in Colorado, but if you so happen Fuck yeah. So if you happen to go to uh Colorado uh this week or any time after listening to this, make sure you visit St. Elmo and go there and check it out because it's got high Paranormal activity. Paranormal. Just like that movie, except probably better. Paraphernalia activity. And and speaking of uh, our statistics, uh, mostly our visitor, our listeners were from New York and Massachusetts, which makes sense because we are next to New York. Yeah, we live we in have Massachusetts. Statistics. And before we probably we mentioned in probably episode five. We have a listener in Guam, which now there's two cities, and Guam. now they're about 16% of our listening ship in Guam. Listening ship. Yeah, and we also got someone in Ireland. Cheers, Mike! Ireland. Uh, but yeah, so we got listeners in more and more places, so hopefully eventually, um, you know, oh, we'll, we'll start... Ireland. We'll start doing, you know, some weird laws in your area next episode after we get the, yeah. you know, the spooky 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 stuff out of the way because of Halloween. Okay. All right. You want to do the next one? Yeah. Let me see this. Ow. My finger just scrapped. We need to go back to the paper. Yeah. Oh, we hope this computer is way too heavy. Okay. All right. Kennecock, Alaska. Oh, fuck you, Alaska! Ah! Ah! Kennecock, Alaska. You can just cut all that other shit out of there. Yep. If you're confused of what's happening, we added I, I, I had a rage quit. Because, you, Alaska, you fucking pissed me off. Alright. Considered the best remaining example... Of early 20th century copper mining. Really? That's all you fucking got? This mill town is at the end of a 60 mile dirt road in the middle of Alaska. Massive Wrangler, Wrangell, St. Alice National Park. Sounds interesting. Think about your names. You, you gotta make names easier these days, okay? Some people don't have technology, like a computer. Probably not in Kennecott. Yeah. Alaska. From 1911 to 1938, Kennecock employed as many as 300 people. Really? 
You guys. I wonder how small that town is. Employed 300 people in the mill town and 300 in the mine. Okay, so a total of 600 employees. Oh, it's probably everyone that lives in town. That's less than a cruise ship. You guys are pathetic. Processing nearly 200 million worth of... Oh, okay. I Was that redact? I redact my last statement. My bad. That's a lot of money in copper. Uh, why are, oh. Whoa, why aren't we in the copper industry, okay? like Because it doesn't come out. There was only 600 people that made $200 million in copper. There's I, two of us. They make it look easy to take out copper out of walls, but in reality, it's really not. I, you just need, you need to build a pickaxe out of wood. Pick sacks out of wood. Okay, so they processed nearly 200 million worth of copper. Good job, guys. Uh, it's better than breaking in the houses and taking the coppers out of the wall. We only got probably a total of doing that, probably like, what, 45 bucks or something like that? It's we, a lot of copper. We're horrible at making money. Uh, the worst. Someone was like, oh, you guys should take copper out of houses that are on sale that no one lives in. Yeah, it's easier said than done. Yeah, try running from the cops with a backpack full of copper. And they check your ID. Like, at the co at the place where you return your metal, they ask for the ID and we're like, Who has right. ID these days? Thankfully, Come on, am I right, guys? Thankfully, I had a fake ID, so they never found me, but... Yeah, we went to like three houses and grabbed forty five dollars worth of copper. It sucked. And cops, if it. you're watching, our name is Zach Darvis. We live on a ghetto. Yeah, my name is Nick Tatro. As a company town, it included a hospital, a general store, a school, a skating. Ring. Whoa, you guys had a skating rink. All right, now we can do some talking now. All right, hockey. A tennis court, oh. huh. yeah, and a recreation hall, and dairy, just dairy, I guess. Okay. By 1938, however, the copper ore was tapped out. Ooh, no more copper. Oh, bye bye to copper. Say bye bye to the copper. <sighs> and kind of co copper corporation. Abruptly abandoned the town. You scummy fucks. You just left everybody. To I feel like this was that town on that TV show where they're making the mines into a tourist attraction. I saw that town. Silent Hill. The one where yeah. the Ash people and the nurses. Those nurses, man. They could, they could twerk. Leaving behind their equipment, their buildings, and their personal belongings. So, I mean, they're up oh. for grabs? I mean, that mean, if you want to take to Alaska and grab their shit out of their houses, if no one's there and they left all their belongings, imagine that. Who's the, down for a trip? The expensive knickknacks we can get out of <laughs> who's there. Who's down for a trip? Cause There's probably some we Hummels. We don't have a license. Some Hummels. I mean, we drive illegally. We do. We don't have ID. Humble figurines are a hard find. When you find them, they're like $250 and they're only about this big. I'll get my Hummels. I'll get my Hummels. The National Park Service and Tour Operations offer guided access to the 14-story concrete mill and several other historic buildings. So, I mean, you know, when they're not looking, then it's when you take their copper. <laughs> yeah. Telling tales of lucky fortunes, tenacious... Frontiersmen and tragic endings in the remote wilderness. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Something about Alaska. A it copper seemed... mining town. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what happens when you just copy and paste an article and just try to read it off. Cunty cot Alaska. I, did, I wrote this episode in about five minutes. Cunty cot. Don't go there. They have okay. no more copper. And now it is time for Spooky Facts. 
That was spooky in my ear. All right. Passing over to Mr. Miller because I'm going to let out a lot of hot air and take a pee pee. So, it's not just allergy season. Everyone has mites living in their eyelashes. So, when you when you get an itchy eyelash and you rub your eyes, it's fucking mites. I thought that was pretty spooky because there's mites living in your eyelashes. Uh, the next one is the Japanese hornet is one of the largest and most venomous hornets in the world. Another reason why I'll never leave the northeast of the United States. A sting from this bug can result in kidney failure. Fuck that shit. Never want to come across a Japanese hornet. Never want to go to ja- Japana. Japana. Right, it, just, it just sounds horrible. Giant hornets that give you kidney failure. I don't like coronets. Oh, this one's interesting. In 2015, a woman, um, a woman began to have headaches. So, like any normal human being, she went to the doctor and found out she had a brain tumor. Oof. Yep. And that's what was causing the headaches. Uh, they discovered after taking the brain tumor out that. Um, Am I on the same one? Oh yeah, they discovered that she had a brain tumor. Obviously, I just said that. And when doctors removed it, they were shocked to see it was a lump resembling skin and contained... Oh my god. It contained bone, teeth, and hair. But this was no parasitic twin. This was no parasitic twin. I had to say that twice because I didn't understand it the first time. Um. So wait. Yeah, this... Does this mean tumors are actually people? Probably. Tumors grow into people. So, if you have a tumor, don't get rid of it. Because it could possibly be a little baby you. Oh. Baby tumor you. But I wasn't a parasitic twin. The mass was called a teratoma. Or T- monstrous... Or monstrous tumor. Teratoma. When the woman was an embryo... Wow. Going Whoa. way back in time when she was. In, she ate her fucking twin, didn't she? Uh, well, some cell tissue fell off and ended up where in her butthole. Ended up where it wasn't where it wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> I knew it. And it ended up in her brain when she was an em- oh, embryo. I was way off. Uh, it then developed hair and teeth, while the rest of her grew as normal. So, pretty much, she was an embryo. And then it just developed this weird thing <laughs> and just became another human. Help me! So she had teeth growing in her head. Yeah, brain. she had teeth and hair growing in her in head. In her head brain. Her brain. And that's what the tumor was. You teeth, very, teeth and bones. Always check your brain for head brain. Yep. Always check your head for head brain. I really miss having a piece of paper. Paper, if you just need it, you chop down trees. All right, in the 19th century, our next one, in the 19th century and before, being literally buried alive was an ever-present worry, as medicine sometimes was mistaken for comatose. They fucked up. So they'd bury these people, think they were dead, but they were actually in a comatose. They fucked up. Yeah, they did. Uh, And... You know, the obviously in comatose, you're not responsible because you're in a fucking coma. They fucked up. So they think that they're dead. And <laughs> because of this, and because of this, people were waking up in their coffins, so they had to make a device that would go inside the coffin so that you can be like, hey, I'm not dead in this coffin. Come get me out of this coffin. You fucking get them out of the coffin. Wow. People, Why would you fucking do that? People are dumb back then. Dumb idiots. Like... Eh, when you're in comatose, don't you still have a heartbeat? You can't just like press on your thing. When I go like th- even when I go like this, <gasps> I can still hear, feel a heartbeat in my eyeballs. I can still feel heartbeats in my eyeballs. That's fucked. They developed your safety coffins. That's what they call them. Devolved coffins. So it was probably like a bell or something. So when you're wake you up, ding you'd the like, bell. 
when so you like, wake up. When you wake up and you're like, oh shit, they put oh, me in a fucking coffin. Oh shit, they buried me. I better Those ring this idiots, bell. Idiots, because you're idiots. Bunch of fucking idiots. I ain't dead. I'm gonna ring this bell, and you better. And then you gotta pray. wait. You gotta wait for somebody to hear that fucking bell because they're idiots. <laughs> they are idiots. I feel like we jumped ahead. Anyways, around 1904, different fact, around 1904, a boy named Robert Eugene Otto, or just Gene, owned Gene a doll, Otto. <laughs> owned a strange looking doll of a boy who he boy doll. named Robert. Robert the doll. Robert the boy doll. Is said to be haunted, aware of what's going on around him, and was even responsible for some violent activity. This guy's going to touch your butthole. But, uh, you know, Robert Ro- the bubble. Robert's tale formed the basis for the film five, uh, Ch- Child's Play, Chucky. A- Annabelle. Not not from Rugrats, from the movie Child's Play. The little, he looks like Chucky from the Rugrats. Not Chucky Finster, the other Chucky. And, um, yeah. Robert. So this doll He's gonna want from to Robert Otto inspired a film. Wrestling. wrestling. That was awesome, spooky. All right, in wrestling, uh, this week we're going. Oh, well, this week we had gone. We are going to tomorrow. We're going to Immortal Championship Wrestling, New okay, York. Chama, dama, no, no, we'll, and, uh, some we'll report if anything interesting happens there. I'm sure. I'm gonna catch some Pokemon. I'll probably catch some. To- but good thing is, Toka it's Pokemon, not a two and a half hour drive like everywhere else. It's only an hour and a half. Hour and a half, so it's a little past. And uh, going you know, Albany, kinda. We gotta drive there ourselves because <laughs> Dirty Ryan Duke took our seat. Yeah, that dirty fucking bath. But yeah, we're going to New York, or not New York. We're yeah, we're going to New York, but we're going to Immortal Championship Wrestling. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna meet Carlito, the guy that made yeah, those Carlito tacos. Carlito will be there. He made them. If tacos. you listen to this, you know, go to their next show. I don't remember who they. Oh. The, their next show, I don't remember the date, but I know at their next show, um, their special guest will be, if I can find it, their special guest for their November show would be Gail Kim from TNA, uh, former TNA knockout women's champion. Don't know who that is. I remember who she is. But yeah, that's who the special guest is, and I'm trying to get Ringworms. That's the next show. Mortal Championship Wrestling, November 23rd, Ringworms. Ringworms. Yep. Uh, Ring Wars. Oh. And uh, I think I'm pretty sure their special guest is Ringworms Gail Kim. Suck. So come check it out at the uh, Capital District at YMCA in Schenectady, New York. November 23rd, Mortal Championship Wrestling, Ringworms. What the fuck uh, was Ring that? Wars. And then November 9th, Saturday, we'll be at uh, New York Championship Wrestling, uh, Tag Team Turmoil 2. Uh, I don't know if they have anything for us. And, uh, you know, that's New York Championship Wrestling, November 9th, uh, Tag Team Turmoil 2, because it's the second one, uh, in Whitesboro, New York. Should be good. Be there, be Should square. Should be good. I don't know. Any of the matches. Wait, yes, none. I do. There's I do, none. I do know. There's actually no matches. What else is going on in wrestling? We just got this in as yep. we we're doing our and podcast, so we had to go back and record it again, but, you know. Here here's for here's all the uh, people who are viewing it on YouTube. There it is, the official flyer. Go to Truly Independent Wrestling on Facebook. Uh-oh. Oh. True, True independent, independent wrestling. Uh, so we're completely wrong about it. Uh, that's what you get for not, you know, updating your shit before you record a podcast. But uh, it is, in fact, Truly Independent does have a show, and Corey's going to tell us all about it. Over to Corey. <laughs> But I did it. So we're good. Um, truly independent wrestling is back for November 16th. November 16th? For November Knockout. We're calling it Truly Thankful. So that's our 
Thanksgiving show, obviously. Um, it's at the Boys and Girls Club in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. 18 Melville Street, Pittsfield. Uh, doors open at 5.30. Bell time is at 6. Adults, $15. Children, ages 6 through 12, $5. Kids, 5 and under are free, as always. Um, club members, free with oh. proof of membership. Oh, wow. So, if you guys have a membership to the Boys and Girls Club, you're in for free. So, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, bring your kids. It's a family-friendly show. Uh, we're going to be there. So, you get to see Oh, we're me. definitely going to be there. We're, we're definitely This is our home company. Yeah. We ain't fucking missing this. So, this, this is great news. Truly independent wrestling, as we announced before. Uh, we were completely wrong. They do have a show. November, what was 16th. it? 16th. November 16th, Truly Independent, Boys and Girls, uh, tr- Truly Independent Wrestling, Boys and Girls Club, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. We're there. back in Pittsfield because Lanesboro can't keep them all together. So be there or be square. Yeah, you don't want to be square. We're, we're, we'll be square in the ring. But, uh, and our last thing is uh, an AI wrote Christmas song. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Boy. Rewind. <laughs> An AI wrote a Christmas song. It's fucking spooky. And it's really, really spooky. Spooky. And we listened to it. Yeah, we did. Here. Here's the clip. That wasn't that, was that fucking stupid. That wasn't very spooky. That was the first time we heard it. Computers that are would, dumb as shit. That was. I can see singing along to that. I could totally sing. Creepy? It. I don't think so. Not creepy. Like it was stupid. So it's definitely a Christmas song. Uh, we'll um we'll link the um I description. Mean, all the computer uh, did was basically the describe everything the that was in the photo. It it did. Flowers. But uh. Flowers. The carol is a lie, this article says. It is an extremely unsettling one. I didn't think it was very unsettling. It's University unsettling. of Toronto researchers uh, was tasked, and uh, researchers tasked an AI to look at a picture and make a song out of it. And, and then the picture was a Christmas tree, uh, and it was supposed to write a song about what was in the picture. And it was like a Christmas tree, and, like I you know, said. like a Christmas tree. I didn't see any fucking flowers in this picture. There was no fucking flowers. But yeah, so it wrote a song about it, and the singing and the singing uh, resulted in a world uh, results for the world to hear. Ugh! The singing results ah, is for the world to hear. The song came out of its. The song that came out of it definitely. It's a Christmas song, but it's extremely settling, unsettling. Settling. Uh, it's no Santa baby, but it... That was all air, and I think I might have sprayed. But it does show just how far AI has come. So, University of Toronto, of course, Canadians, always doing great things. I wish I was a Canadian. Yeah, uh, me I'm too. a Canadian. Yeah, we, we're Canadians. We we've been to, there once. Yeah, we, Hey there, bud. We went there once. Yeah, yeah. Winchester and a twofer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we went up there and, um, yeah. 
I, I got a Winchester in my house there, bud. All right. Well, we didn't buy a twofer, but um, we, we got but, some Mickey's. But close enough to a Mickey. I mean, it's the same size. It's just not a liquor Mickey. But yeah, liquor you know, Mickey. I went to Canada and, you know, I bought some candy for, you know, a toonie. Some, you know, and, uh, you know, toonie a loony got you some cartoony. That can is pretty cool. And their money looks like a rainbow. And it looks like you can eat it. But uh, yeah, this AI money. made a song, a Christmas song. And I guess to these people who wrote this article, which I will put in the description below, I thought it was unsettling. I just thought it was pretty fucking dumb. Ah! But um, so we got for this episode. I guess it's time for. Spooky. What's really spooky is when you're all alone and the lights go out and you have no Wi Fi reception. Isn't that? Happy Halloween from DSB. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And that wraps up this episode of DSB Talk. Uh, join us next week as we're looking to have a guest next week. Ah, uh, baby. Uh, we baby, don't know baby. who that guest is going to be. Well, we know who that guest is going to be. But you but don't know how I don't want to. St- I don't want to say who that guest is going to be just in case it jinxes us and we don't get that guest. So it may just be me? It's guaranteed to be no one you've uh, never heard of. Or seen before. But, uh, yeah, we're looking at a guest and we'll announce it during the week when we figure it all out. And I'm going to shut this laptop and call it a motherfucking day. Thank <laughs> you.